What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today once again we're covering F1 2017 career mode. This time we're here for the third round of the season, the Bahrain Grand Prix. In the previous episode, really good. We got some points in China on a really uh, aggressive strategy and today we're going to get some upgrades put on the car in the form of an engine upgrade. So let's go ahead and get the good news from the engineer. Looks like one of our development parts didn't fare too well in testing. Kids, would you step outside for a second? <laughs> Dear Lord, that's the loudest profanity I've ever heard. I put it on hold for now. You can restart work from the laptop. We're going to have to go back now and make some adjustments in order to get the final numbers looking more like we were expecting from the simulation. Classic McLaren Honda. Not only is the car so crap, reliability and engine wear is crap, the upgrades don't work either. Development has failed. Um, we're going to have to spend 450 resource points to put the thing back on the car. And it's going to take another two weeks for the upgrade to take place. So, accordingly, it's going to be ready for the Russian Grand Prix. So, we still have no upgrades on the car. So, that's that's absolutely amazing. We're going to, we're going to go ahead and develop the part again. More resource points being diverted away. But that's not the start of the career mode episode that any of us wanted. Welcome to the Bahrain Grand Prix, where practice is about to get underway. So here we are then, for practice, for the Bahrain Grand Prix. We've got to get our heads down once again and try and build up those resource points once again. Uh, because we're behind the eight ball now in terms of development. We were always behind the eight ball with a car that was uh, so far off the pace, so far off, uh, you know, even the midfield. Uh, but now that work um, is just increased. It's, it's just that, that mountain that we're trying to climb has just got that little bit steeper. But uh, we're not going to let that deter us for too long. We're going to get on with the practice programs, get as many purple scores as what we can. And now we're on to the qualifying pace. You can see, even on our fast lap, we're still getting overtaken by a Ferrari. This is Kimi Raikkonen up the inside, our championship leader, who seems to be absolutely OP in F1 2017, at least in the, in the review builds we've seen so far. He's winning in everyone's... Uh, you know, career modes, and uh, he's just unstoppable, it must be said, but um, our qualifying run did not go um, all too well, pushing way too hard into turn four, uh, lost the back end, and that was the end of that lap. So I bolted on a new set of super soft tires, waited for the end of the session, and now we're going to go again. I also made a setup change as well. Um, the setup that I uploaded in the Australia setup video the other day, I've diverted away from that. I've actually gone back to the um, stock default setup but made the wings slightly lower. I think they're like 5.5 five wings and hopefully that can give us a little bit more pace, a little bit more straight line speed and we'll see how we go. Through the middle sector and up to the final corner now, we improve by uh, just under a tenth on the target time that we were um, given by the team and it puts us in 17th place overall in the session. Um, must be said though, that's not a great lap. It, it really isn't. We were only just ahead of Fernando Alonso and he was on mediums. So either I'm driving terribly, which I might probably well be. Uh, I feel like it was a decent lap that I put in, but the AI just might be OP at this track. Um, it's an, an entirely possible scenario that we could have. The uh, F1 2017, it's a new game. We could have more uh, OP tracks for the AI. We could have different OP tracks for the AI, but um, since we're so far off the pace and we know that the uh, engine life isn't good on this McLaren Honda, we're going to go ahead and fit the fifth uh, power unit parts for every single component, get the grid penalties, start last anyway because, well, we're not competitive this weekend anyway and we don't have the upgrade um, ready. So we may as well start last, get an extra engine, and uh, make us more competitive later on in the season by having uh, fresher engines. It only makes sense because we're so slow as, as we are at the moment. I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. But um, because we're going to be starting last in qualifying, it makes no sense for us to cover that. We're just going to jump straight to the race and see how we go for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Wish me luck. 
Bahrain has showed us many times in the past, though, Anthony Davidson, that a good strategy will only take you so far. Beyond that, you need good racecraft and you need good consistency. And a little bit of luck too, I'd say. This is one of those circuits where the safety car always seems to come out just at the right time to condense the field together and mix up the cars on different strategies. It's hard on brakes, it's tough on fuel, and the main overtaking opportunity is down into turn one, where it's easy to outbreak your opponent and potentially have a bit of argy-bargy as well. We need to be doing better than this. Let's push hard. Jeff, did you get the memo that we were putting a brand new engine in and getting the grid penalties? I don't think he got that. But either way, here we are on the grid of the Bahrain Grand Prix, starting last place. We only need to find two positions to meet the team's expectations. So I, I'm pretty confident we can do this. But of course, as always, we want to finish in the points. Five red lights and away we go for the Bahrain Grand Prix. Uh, not a great start. It looks like everyone around us is on the softer compound of tyre. So making positions early here is going to be quite tough um, considering the lack of pace we might potentially have. Up the inside, everyone going quite cautiously into turn one and we take full advantage of that into P17. Uh, Grosjean is getting very feisty here with Carlos Sainz as he squeezes him out and uh, hangs him out to dry and he gets that position off of the Toro Rosso driver. Heading into turn four now, Carlos Sainz uh, a little bit cautious as well, not running into the back of Grosjean. That makes him a little bit weak here, but he gets a nice exit off of turn four and holds onto uh, 16th place. So yeah, from here it's going to be ultra tough considering we're on a slower tyre on a slower car. Um, we're just going to take any opportunities that come our way and uh, we try and go on the inside of Grosjean on there, nothing really happening. Into the triple left hander, really easy to lock up here, uh, very easy to run into the back of another car as well. That's uh, Daniel Kafiat um, getting a bit feisty with Hulkenberg and uh, hopefully the guys ahead can continue um, to battle, to squabble and that might uh, get me into the game uh, ever so slightly. That's uh, Carlos Sainz getting me up the inside and that's a uh, position lost there. I think this might be a bit of a trade here as you can see Kevin Magnussen lining me up as well. I'm running rich revs. I'm doing absolutely everything in my power to hold position but that, you can't do any more than that. Uh, I, I, I break late into the first corner. There's a bit of contact and uh, uh, he's still up my inside and we squeeze him out and we hold on to P17. I'm doing everything I can guys to hold on to position but when you have a car that's so slow that's, uh, that's all you can do. I'm sorry if I, I'm coming across as complaining. I don't want to do that. Um, so if I am banging on about it too much, please let me know. And I will um, minimize the chatter about the uh, McLaren Honda. I feel like I'm embracing the McLaren Honda lifestyle already. Uh, I'm, I'm turning myself or the team into a meme. Um, should I get the deck, deck, deck chair out for the next one? I'm not too sure. But either way, we're still carrying on, we're still pressing on. We know that uh, pace is going to be a bit slow in this early phase, since we are on the soft compound tyres. Um, it will come to us later when we bolt on the supers, but uh, that's just going to have to wait for now. We're just going to have to endure. We knew this track was not going to be strong for us here in Bahrain. It's a power track. It's full of straights. What can we do? Ericsson is up next behind us. Uh, hopefully, uh, we at least have a little bit of a pace buffer to uh, keep those guys behind. That's not really helping my day by running wide like that. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, 131.9. Uh, I imagine we won't be anywhere near that uh, by the time we cross the line, so we'll have to wait and see though. Fairly average exit out of the final corner, and there's no surprise that my teammate Alonso is still last. But uh, DRS has been enabled. Here's Ericsson coming in the slipstream. Uh, we defend to the inside to see if we can hold position into turn one, he's still on our outside there. Uh, we're just going to let him take the long way around turn one. He's still there on the inside. Oh, that's so close. But we just managed to hold on. 18th place. Have you ever seen a more intense battle for points uh, for, for, for like pretty much last place? I don't think you have. But uh, get ready because this career mode is going to be all about that last place life. VSC deployed. The virtual safety car has been deployed. We need to keep a positive delta here. Slow down. So it looks like we've already lost a runner in this Grand Prix. I believe it was Daniel Kafia. And uh, yeah, he's out of the Grand Prix. And uh, that is a free position for us. Uh, basically, all we need to do in this race is finish in 18th place, I believe. Um, so as long as we beat one person in this Grand Prix, then we'll be uh, achieving the team's goals. I guess it is quite nice in a way. 
when uh, you've got the McLaren Honda, you don't have to work too hard to achieve the team's goals. But of course, um, we don't want to be just achieving the team's goals. We actually want to be progressing forward in the championship and regularly uh, scoring points. Daniel Ricciardo is out of the Grand Prix now as well. So he had some kind of uh, engine drama. He pulled off to the side of the exit of the final corner. And uh, now that is guaranteed us passing the objecti objectives from the team. Um, simply because two people have retired. It's beautiful. But lap six, we've got Fernando Alonso up the inside into turn one. He goes for the dive. We have to leave him the space like we always do. And, uh, well, like you always should for Fernando Alonso. Otherwise, you'll get yelled at. But either way, side by side for the two McLaren Hondas. He's still on the inside. As we head into turn four, we outbreak him around the outside. And I think that is us uh, holding down P16 for the moment. So, yeah. I knew Bahrain was going to be a tough track for this car. I just didn't foresee it being this bad. I feel like uh, on top of it being uh, a really hard track for our car, it seems like the AI are very strong at this track as well. I haven't changed the difficulty setting at all uh, from the previous episode. It's still at 104. So, yeah, it seems like these guys are pretty darn quick around here and we just can't uh, maintain the pace that uh, everyone else is... Uh, uh, keeping up at the moment, so it's looking pretty depressing in all honesty, but here we go This is Lance Stroll going around the outside. This is the fun part of the race where everyone on fresher tires has uh, just uh, Made their first pit stop and has rejoined behind us and now you get to see uh, Overtakes montage not from myself, but from everyone else uh, Flying right past me. There's another yellow flag up ahead. Uh, this is for one of the Renaults. That's Jolien Palmer uh, rejoining dangerously and uh, giving me two pr uh, free positions uh, for the taking. He got caught up on Fernando Alonso's left rear tyre and then completely rejoins on the racing line and uh, blocks the Williams. I got two free positions and as you'll see on my replay here, we did very well to avoid both of those cars. Very close to the Williams, uh, but we managed to get away with that Scott free and uh, back um, in front of those two guys. So we're holding down P8 at the moment. It's about to be P7. Then back up to P8 <laughs> as uh, we get overtaken by Jolien. Here comes Lance Stroll as well up the inside. Uh, we're going to try and defend. It's very close. There's a bit of uh, light grazing between the two side pods and uh, we only hold on for another two corners before Stroll goes for another stroll up my inside into turn four. We've run wide as well and uh, that is the position uh, done and dusted. So from here, what I'm hoping for is a safety car, virtual safety car, something like that, that can give me a free pit stop and kind of uh, throw me into the battle with these guys, but it doesn't look like that is happening at the moment as we just continue to lose positions, hand over fist. Like I said, we're not really fighting these guys. I'm trying to do my best to maintain a decent lap time. I'm pretty much running rich uh, on the start finish straight and on the back straight as well. But uh, as you can see, even with uh, Slipstream and DRS, we still get overtaken very easily by a Renault-powered car. So as you can see, we've got a lot of work to do in the way of the uh, power unit, but a lot of work to do to get back on the track cleanly. That was uh, very messy as uh, we got caught up with uh, one of the Renaults. I think it was Palmer. But uh, yeah, had to uh, make a little uh, quick dash over the, uh, <laughs> the gravel trap and back onto the racing line and... Uh, yeah, we lost a, a whole bunch of positions in the process, but that's fine. We weren't really uh, racing those guys anyway. We were a pit stop down. Lap 11 now, we're into the pits, and uh, looks like Alonso is in for his stop as well on a very similar strategy. Uh, the team originally said to put me on supers for this middle stint, but I'm like, no. Let's uh, go back onto the softs and uh, see how long we can take this. I've actually missed the, uh, the button to uh, um, manually go again. Uh, yeah, so I want to run the supers at the end of the race. I'm hoping for a safety car or something like that. Uh, if there is, then I can bolt on the fast tires and then be in the game. There's no point running the supers now and being, what, 10, 15 seconds behind the next car ahead and, and really just wasting that tire. May as well save it to the end in case a safety car comes out. So, yeah, lap 17, trying to push on as much as we can. We are saving the engine, saving the tires a little bit, but I'm not too sure how much that is actually working. Uh, the McLaren is very, very hard on its engine in terms of its lifespan, but uh, every uh, little bit counts, I suppose, because we're pretty much out of this race, and there's absolutely no way we're going to finish in the points without a safety car interference, but 
Uh, towards the end of the race, we had one of the Sabres uh, come out of the pits for their final stop, and we actually managed to gain a position there very briefly before Marcus Ericsson got us back again. We're going to try and hold it around the outside and try and make a battle of things, but uh, he uh, gives us a little bit of a shove, and I'm not too sure whether he felt guilty about that and just kind of lifted off the throttle and let me go back past him again. Not entirely sure, but the battle rejoins once again now on lap 21, and here he goes around the outside, slipstream, bit of DRS, and uh, he takes position very briefly before we lunge him back under brakes into turn number one. So, yeah, this battle will be pretty short-lived anyway. We've got to make our final stop. We've got to put on the supers uh, because we do need to use two different tyre compounds and we uh, go for another move up the inside um, in a counter-attacking move once again. We go slow and fast out through turn three and uh, we're going to try and get him around the outside. That was so close. You do not want to get any closer than that to making contact than what we did just there. Around the outside through turn four. And we should have the move done there. Uh, yes, we do. So 22, here he comes once again up the inside into the final corner. We try and do the same uh, switchback move once again. Slow and fast out. Didn't quite work out. We just didn't have the drive off the final corner there for some reason. And uh, that is that battle pretty much over with. So from here... Uh, oh wow, that is uh, Kimi Raikkonen who now leads this race. Um, he's coming now to lap us. I was actually going to mention that uh, I was really just staying out and staying out, uh, waiting for a safety car to come out because I was fearing if I would have made my final stop onto the Supers, I was fearing that I would have got lapped and uh, that is the scenario that we face right now with six laps to go. It's all over. We're a lap down and there is no way to salvage a points finish so it's time to come in to the pits for the final time, put on the supers and run to the end of the race. Release, release. <sighs> that was the race, unfortunately. Um, we knew this was going to be a tough race. Um, scoring points here was going to be virtually impossible. I tried my best, but unfortunately it just wasn't enough. A very disappointing race. I can only apologise. Thank you for all your hard work out there. That was a strong drive and a good finish. Well done. And as we can see, it's time for the podium. And as the drivers make their way out, there's a familiar red suit making its way to the top step. Fantastic win for Ferrari. So Raikkonen wins another race. That's uh, three from three for the Flying Finn. And uh, yeah, he leads the championship by an absolute mile. Now, I don't want to completely blame the car for my performance today. I, I feel like I didn't get the most out of it either. Um, I don't think I was driving particularly well. I think I was kind of lacking under brakes. I wasn't trail braking as well as what I could have, so I think I was harming my own pace there. So, I need to go back to the drawing board in many ways. Uh, driving style, setup, and also with just the R&D development and stuff. So, yeah, there's a lot to work on for this career mode, and it's going to take a lot of effort, a lot of time, and a lot of practice to get to where we want to be. I recently had a, an issue with one of my... Uh, brake pedals. Um, I had it in a league race actually last Sunday and I've had to make the clutch pedal my brake pedal now so my braking you know isn't as you know 100% as what it was about a week ago but uh, I am slowly building up to the kind of pace that I'm uh, normally uh, showing. Hopefully yeah we just be bang on the pace uh, very very quickly. I'll try and practice as much as I can but yeah, we're doing the best that we can at the moment. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos. In the next one, I think we've got the Russian Grand Prix and we are set for another uh, upgrade or the first original upgrade to take place in the next one. So look forward to that. We made a um, like a competency upgrade uh, on the side there for the power unit. Basically, it meant that I could upgrade uh, future power unit um, things for a cheaper price and so I took that hit now um, with the hope of that being a long-term benefit in the future because we are going to be working on the power unit so much in this career mode but that is going to do it for today we're going to be switching back to the first original power unit for the next one because practice is coming up for the Russian Grand Prix and we don't want to be using our brand new power unit that we've just switched on uh, for this episode but that's it for today thank you guys so much for watching if you could leave a like um, that would really help me out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to see plenty more F1 2017 videos. At this point, this is the absolute worst that the career mode will be. It's only going to improve from here and we're only going to chip away and get closer and closer to the midfield 
and then eventually we might get some points, we might get some podiums, and dare I even say it, we might even get a race win. That would be the absolute dream for this McLaren Honda. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you next time.